Hi everyone, this is Professor Benjamin and we are moving into week three of this course so we're quickly moving forward um, in the seven week class. Most of you are getting the hang of things which I think is great so you're understanding that we have an initial post due on Wednesday, response post due on Friday, that we're covering two sessions per week, um, but a couple things leading up as we move forward. Number one is that this week we are covering sustainability in food and as you can see some of your classmates have already submitted their work which is fine you're more than welcome to submit anytime up till the due date um, so one of the sessions that we cover is food and required when you submit your post for food is that you have watched the film food incorporated um, it is um, becoming a little bit of an older film now but it's actually very relevant. Um, all the same topics are still discussed throughout the food world today, so I think it's a great film. Um, you'll be in there. Uh, Michael Pollan's in there. In fact, he just came out with a whole new book um, talking about psychedelic drugs. I know it's really interesting on in terms of how how um, it affects your brain, and it, it could be used um, in the future for um, other types of um, pharmaceutical drugs. So uh, he talks about um, a couple topics in there, and it's a very um, it's a very true film. There's a lot of um, while it is made for the general public, meaning that um, they don't go into super detail in certain aspects. You will see that most of the topics that are covered are very factually based uh, and that is really how our food system is run today. So Food Incorporated, make sure you watch the film. You can find it on Netflix, you can find it on Amazon, you can find it um, YouTube videos um, of it. There's, so there's tons of options for you. It's in every local library, so there's wonderful options for you to watch that film. And then we cover sustainability this week, so I'll show you that. I'll, I'll run through the module just really quickly. So last week, but the, also I want to show you under this week, um, we when we cover food, so this week we cover sustainability, and we'll talk about what is sustainability um, of a company. It's three different things, so they have to meet a social, an economic, and an environmental portion. Where those three things overlap is what we call sustainability. A company cannot be sustainable if it just has an environmental portion, but it doesn't do the social or the economic. So everything kind of has to be together. Where they overlap is where you have a sustainable company. I give you some examples of it. Um, and there are some other things that, you know, come, a lot of companies claim they're sustainable, but in reality, they're not sustainable. So you have to definitely take when a company says they're sustainable with a grain of salt, and you really need to really look into whether the company is sustainable or not. A lot of times, sustainable companies are companies that can't get into the main share market. And the reason they have trouble doing that is because the cost of their products is higher. The reason the cost of their products is higher higher is because they don't externalize the costs like in the last story of stuff video that we watched last from last week um, you'll realize that it actually costs a lot of money to produce a product a real product where everyone along the system is paid a very good fair share price where environmental regulations are followed etc it costs money to do that and when it costs money to do that then the product price is higher which means you can't buy well you can buy more things if you have more exposable ex if you have more disposable income, um, but you know if you're gonna buy a handbag that's made properly and that has you know is of the right material, etc., you're gonna pay for that. And I, I know a lot of people pay for that even when it's not. Um, but it should limit the amount of handbags that you buy because you're buying that. Same with like tables. Uh, if you buy a table that someone hand carves, you're going to pay more money for that than you're going to pay um, if you, if it's made in China by someone in a sweatshop and not and the the wood is not um, a you know if the resource of the wood is 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 not properly harvested. So there's just a lot of questions to be asked when we purchase all of these different products um, today. So that's and that's sustainable. Fair share is when we actually buy products from real people who um, are paid a fair wage that um, hold environmental standards that um, you know again treat their their people fairly. Their 
producers fairly or their pickers or their um, craftsmen, all of that along the line. And you'll read now um, about how big companies want to get on fair trade. So, you know, big companies want to get that fair trade module. And Dunkin' Donuts now, you know, sells coffee that's fair trade. Coffee is actually the second highest. Caffeine is actually the one of the second highest commodity that's traded today. And that is the coffee bean. And it has led to a lot of problems. So coffee beans a lot of times are harvested by children, um, slaves uh, that throughout the world. And coffee is another I mean, uh, chocolate is another major issue that we should look into in terms of you should always try and buy fair trade coffee and fair trade chocolate um, because if not, a lot of children are enslaved so that we can have chocolate and coffee. Um, but one of the things is, is fair trade, you know, Dunkin' Donuts sells fair trade coffee, but then on the other hand, they sell, you know, their styrofoam cups are the worst thing for the environment. So it's like, well, you support fair trade, but do you really support fair trade? You know, you support fair trade where you get your coffee beans from, and, and that's just actually a very small amount of the coffee beans that comes into Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and then on the other hand, um, you have these coffee cups that are going to stay around on the earth forever. And the amount of garbage, you know, if whatever, if billion millions of people run on Dunkin', which is, you know, their statement, then how, how many of these coffee cups are out there? How many of these coffee cups are out there that are will never decompose? So there's a lot of questions about whether companies are sustainable. You know, what is fair trade? Um, can you push both sustainability and consumption? Walmart says they can. I don't know if they really can. Um, and then you have companies who are trying. Now, I'm not saying Ikea is the perfect company for this because they do have a lot of, um, they do produce a lot of products from they import a lot of products from China. Um, one of their big things is they say is that they would rather um, try and work with their suppliers from China. And the reason for this is that they say if they pull out in China, those people don't give them all the factual basis they need. For example, the age of their workers, the amount of hours of workers are working, etc. Um, they would rather work with them, um, stick with them, have um, unplanned visits, all, do all of this kind of stuff to try and um, and talk with the, the manufacturers to really try and make the working conditions better for their individuals um, because they said, listen, if we if we decide that we're not going to work with them and move um, move out of this area, then Walmart's just going to come in and take over that, that factory. Um, and then we've lost all hope of actually making the working conditions better for these individuals. Now, I know that's just, it's a little bit of a, a hypocrisy. Um, you know, why not bring your manufacturing back to the United States? Because wouldn't that be a better option? And so there's a lot of questions, but IKEA has tried um, to to you know less packaging. They've tried to build their um, locations next to where most people go shopping for other things or along train routes, etc. Um, they do treat their employees very well. So there's a lot of um, things that IKEA is doing right, but I, you know there are some small things they could do better. They are considered a sustainable company. Apple, why are they bringing manufacturing back to the United States? Um, and, and this is, you know, a questionable thing. Sometimes they're bringing manufacturing back for um, tax credits, um, but there was a huge push because of Foxcom and, uh, and Foxconn and, and whether, you know, they were exposed for hiring, um, you know, children to manufacture all of the circuit boards and the cell phones, etc. So there's a lot of questions about um, sustainable products. Now, is it, you know, is it, is it easy to live with, without sustainable products? Um, Yes, it's really easy to live without sustainable products. It's very hard to find sustainable products. It takes a lot of research and time. And a lot of times now in the United States, people just don't have time for that. When we have Five Below and Dollar Stores and Dollar Tree and Family Dollar, you know, it's just really um, economically and um, conveniently, uh, you know, for convenience sake, it's easier to go to these stores. Um, but we just definitely need to keep thinking about our consumption standpoint and where we're doing. And, and truly, if we demand products, people will respond. Bond. Um, if you look under here, though, under Section 5, you'll see that review for the midterm exam. Um, 
I the the midterm exam is all essay so it's absolutely essential that you type out these answers before I'm gonna try and make a video this week on, on for the midterm exam so that it'll help you study and prepare for the midterm exam but you'll see it there because you want to start preparing now for the midterm exam um, food incorporated remember we need to watch that film this week um, there are some other articles under here make sure that if you are answering the question about the cheap foods question that you make sure you read why making healthy food cheaper is not enough and incorporate both the film and this article into your answer it's absolutely essential that you do that um, and so there's just a couple other articles in there um, right now there's been a lot of recalls this summer on food salmonella poisoning um, I just saw in Ritz crackers um, there was a salmonella outbreak um, just a probably last week or the week before that um, for romaine lettuce so there's just a lot of um, outbreaks um, on food recently it happens all the time if you just go to the CDC website you'll see all of the different um, recalls that are out there and um, it's scary because this is our food system um, and if and remember and Michael Pollan talks about this in the film is that if there's you know we put all of our eggs in one basket especially in corn so if there's a shock to that system then the entire system could fall apart we need to support our local farmers if you can go to any farmers markets um, that it you know or support just a local um, someone trying to make their their way by making products themselves then that's probably the better way to go um, I know a lot of times it is more expensive um, but we also need to also curb our food intake um, so a lot of us eat a lot we eat a lot of junky products my kids do in the summer it's awful um, but I really do try and curb it I do my best to try and limit what they're eating um, and and how I can access that at a cheaper price because it does it does get expensive but there are ways that you can make um, make delicious meals for a cheaper price um, rice is a main staple it's not super expensive beans are really good I know it's hard to get your kids to eat them but it is worth a shot so these are the two sessions we covered this week last week we covered um, consumption and we covered ethics economics and policy a lot of you did a good job remember that linear system model it's a line there's only an input and an output the output is never put back into the input when we put the output back into the input we have a closed loop system and this is really important um, because uh, the closed loop system will reuse the resources that we um, have already taken out of the earth and re purpose them into something else uh, right now all it is is an input and an output and the output winds up in the garbage and that is a huge problem um, is that those resources are never used again so we need to find ways that we can take the output and put it back into the input because if not we will run out of resources and that is a big problem so that is the real answer for the linear system is that why we cannot live on a linear system in a finite world is because it's a line and in a line it needs to be actually a circle in a line there's only an input and an output so make sure you address that when you're answering that question um, a lot of you did a really good job on the other questions a lot of you steered away from the cap and trade question I mean not the cap and trade the um, cost benefit analysis question so make sure you know that because it is on the midterm exam I'm trying to think a lot of you did a great job on the environmental justice uh, questions is that remember it has to do with lack of education lack of income lack of time a lot of these areas have lower taxes on them so a lot of um, companies want to move in so there's a lot involved with that uh, consumption and waste a lot of you did a great job answering the questions the video the story of stuff um, remember the idea to reduce our consumption mindset with sharing means that we would stop buying things so we would stop buying products if our um, if our if we are trading or if we were maybe buying and selling used products online or something like that um, and so that means that we would buy less like new items which would reduce our consumption mindset so that is the idea of that okay so have a good week I'm gonna try and put up a this week um, a video for that midterm exam which would be wonderful um, and that'll help you prepare for your midterm exam because we have five and six this week and then don't forget next week we're gonna cover seven and eight and then you have your midterm exam due so it's absolutely essential that you start um, 
preparing now for your midterm exam. You'll see it's all essay and all of those questions will be on the midterm exam. So pretty much I'm giving you an open book test before the midterm. Um, you just have to write out the answers. All right, so have a wonderful week. Reach out if you have any questions.